When we put this angioedema center together with the support of the U.S. HAE Association, the goal was to establish the first national referral center for hereditary angioedema patients. Our vision for the angioedema center is to really offer a comprehensive evaluation and treatment. So first and foremost, um, we can ensure the diagnosis is correct and we can discuss with them all of the treatment options, of which there are, are quite a number these days and more in development, um, to ensure that their treatment is really optimized for, for their condition and their circumstances. Now, ultimately, our goal is to pursue a cure, and so I think just the, the uh, importance of that will hopefully be important to, to, to patients who are interested in coming here. The angioedema attacks that are part of hereditary angioedema usually start uh, unexpectedly. So one of the real problems uh, for, for these people is that they can't predict when they're going to swell. Usually the swelling will start in their skin or their intestines, so they get abdominal pain, or sometimes the throat, so they'll start to have difficulty breathing. And usually it's a gradual process, so it takes several hours for most patients to have very severe and disabling swelling. Then that swelling episode will often last for two to four days. So this is a protracted problem. It doesn't come and go quickly. Uh, and because of that, there's a lot of disability associated with the swelling. If it hits the throat, it can be life-threatening, and unfortunately, um, there are deaths every year from hereditary angioedema. These patients, unfortunately, get misdiagnosed or labeled with all kinds of other problems. So they're told they have allergic reactions uh, to, to medications or to foods, and that that's causing their swelling. They're often told they have um, bowel uh, disorders, so irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel disease. Some of them even have had multiple surgeries, so they've had their gallbladder taken out, their appendix taken out. Um, many women have had gynecologic procedures with the thought that that was causing their recurring abdominal pain. We've seen a dramatic shift in the treatment options for hereditary angioedema in the last five years or so. Um, before then, there was very little that could be done to treat hereditary angioedema. The good news is that now patients do have effective treatment options, and I think that's a very important factor for them to know. It's empowering for patients to understand that, yes, there are management uh, uh, options, there are medications that will help control this condition. Um, and so part of our goal is to make sure that people are educated about that, um, that they make uh, wise choices and know the risks and benefits of all these different treatment options. And um, again, the good news is I think it's dramatically changed um, the future uh, for patients with HAE. This is now a manageable chronic condition for the vast majority of people. Our center hopes to be leaders in really three areas. Uh, the first is patient care, so offering the best possible comprehensive care to patients with hereditary angioedema. The second is to lead in the area of research, and that includes both you know, clinical trials of new medications, but also basic research to help us better understand the underlying cause uh, for hereditary angioedema and other forms of angioedema. And third, to provide education for both healthcare providers as well as for affected individuals and their families because this is a familial condition. There's a lot of education that needs to happen, um, not only with regard to the genetics, but how it affects families and, and, and sort of answering questions and providing programs so that people can live better lives.